no clue on who you're going to run into or what's going to happen there. And you ran into one awesome individual, Earl Melcher, who is from uh, Elbow Lake, actually Grant County, who works in Elbow Lake. And uh, I'll tell you what, you know, uh, his heart and compassion was instantly uh, in your world. And because of the promotion of the story, your mother's efforts, your family's efforts, the community's efforts, that story was out there, Jasmine. And it was out there so much that when Earl saw you, he knew who you were. Which is the part of the story that tells me of how important it is in the law enforcement world to make sure that if any other community has something of this nature, to make sure that you share information with your community and involve others. Because it's the only way that uh, those kinds of stories can happen. And we all know, uh, I, look at, I look at Earl as a hero. Yeah. I look at him as somebody who, uh, you know, he looks at it as, uh, oh, I was just in the right place or the wrong place, however you look at it at that time. And I look at it as a, her, a hero because of how he reacted. And how he went so far to say, you know, he, he wasn't sure who you were when you were off in a distance. He didn't know whether you were even a bear or whether you were an animal or whether you were what, really. It was often a far distance. But his instinct said that he had, somebody needed some help. So instead of running into his house, he stayed out there and seeked out that help. And then when he saw you closer and identified that it was a person, he identified that it was you. And when he identified that it was you, everything in his body was to make sure that you found safety immediately. And then the rest of that story is, is you went into his truck, right? And then you had a story your mouth couldn't quit with your story, could it, Jasmine? And your story was about, uh, about getting some help and to tell your story, and he believed in you instantly. And he listened to you, and then, of course, the steps that were taken uh, about finding you safety. And, you know, let's think about it for a second. From Earl's perspective as well, he has no idea the level of danger that you're, that, that's involved here for himself, for, for Jasmine. And so he made the absolute right decision, calling 911 immediately, getting them on the phone, and then your communication with Earl, your trust in Earl, Jasmine, to share the story and to tell quickly, you know, that car right there. And then he takes you to safety, to Elbow Lake. And so I look at you, Earl, as a hero. And uh, very grateful to have people like you in our communities and in our society. And as we know, you know, part of the efforts to try and help find you safely and alive was to put that message out there and then people come forward and wanted to do, do a reward for the help in finding you. And so that reward added up to be $7,000. Two thousands of the dollars come from your family. And then there's an anonymous person who I personally do not know who that is that wanted to help with this story too and wanted to give $5,000 of their money to help this cause as well. And so that was all secured through a lawyer's office. This person didn't come to the police department. This person went to a lawyer's office to say, I want to help. If I can help, if I can make a difference, I want to help. And so they put $5,000 in a trust account to be given to who I look at, the hero. Earl Milcher. And so this story went on, and now that we put the story together and we've had some time, and to put the pieces together to get the story clear, Earl is that hero. And he went out of his way, and he's entitled to the $7,000 in the reward money. And so I had the opportunity to visit with Earl, I think the very first day I called him. And, you know, I got goosebumps right now, but I didn't have long sleeve shirts on as long as the shirt on you see those. This man could care less about the reward. He doesn't even really feel like it's the connection to him, really, in his mind. It was about his efforts to help Jasmine. And so much so that that day I called Earl and I said, you know, because some people, I have no idea, some people probably are thinking about, well, God, I'm going to get a reward. That was so far from his mindset, it wasn't even part of his world. But I wanted to call him and assure him that a part of a process that someday we're going to have to deal with that issue and, uh, and that I would get back to him. And so this week I got back to Earl and I asked him uh, that it's come to the decision. And I visited with, with you, Sarah, 
I wanted Sarah involved in this decision on who was the proper recipient of the reward. And Sarah agreed with me that Earl is the proper recipient of this reward. And so today is a day of celebration. And the celebration is to give that reward uh, verbally to Earl. And I have to say it that way because when I call Earl this week to say, you know, Mr. Uh, congratulations on your retirement. And uh, he retired last Friday, by the way. Uh, I have some news for you. You're going to get that reward. And he couldn't get the words out of his mouth quick enough. And the words go something like this. I retired last Friday. I could use that money more now than ever in my lifetime. <laughs> but it wouldn't be right. It wouldn't be right. What I want to do with that reward is I want to give that reward to Jasper. And so it's today of celebration. And what, what Earl did, and Earl, it's time for you to talk, because verbally, through you, that reward is going to Jasper. So it's your opportunity to give the words in your mind or in your heart or whatever you want to have to say in regards to that and distribute that check accordingly. I just want to say that the good Lord put me in a spot that day that uh, sent me home made me look at the spot in my field and figure out what's going on. And it was a great experience for me. It was a bad situation. It turned out fantastic as far as I'm concerned. It's kind of given me a new look on life. Uh, I want the reward money, like he says, reward, mo reward money means absolutely nothing to me. And I want to present this check to you. Jasmine, for this part of it. You guys deserve it, and I think it's going to the best place to go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you should know, Sarah, because you're the adult, is why that is made out to you. So, out in my mind first day I talked to Rick about it I said I know where that's going and he knew exactly where I was coming from um, it's go back to the family they can use it that's changed me I want to help people now and you know you, you get you get in a in a rut you work you go to work you get up you go to work you get up you go to work you have some fun once in a while but 
it you, it made me look at things a lot differently. That there's there's other things I can do. If you don't like help people, volunteer, and that's the best thing you can do. It makes you feel good when you help somebody out in a bad situation. Him and his wife are amazing people. You know, I think anybody else wouldn't have. But, you know, it seems like it was just yesterday when we were waiting for her at the hospital. Does it renew that there's kindness out there, that there's good people out there? Yeah. yeah. I, I look up to Earl as like a hero. There's good people in the world still. Not many, but there still is. And he's one of them.